the Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's actually here, we're actually here, and I'm actually gonna talk about it right now, spoiler free. When I first started getting super seriously invested in the Final Fantasy franchise, it must have been back in like 2005 or 6. It was just before they unveiled the Final Fantasy XIII Fabula Nova Crystallis project at E3, and suffice to say, this doesn't mean it wasn't something that I was in a loop about prior to the announcement, but it was just something about watching Lightning doing all those jumps and flips and fighting all those soldiers It was with the kick-ass battle theme, bro. It was just... I just couldn't get enough of the trailer. And then came Final Fantasy vs. XIII, and I could go on and on about that, but just long or short, no matter the length of the trailer, it was just an absolute delight to see. And it always sparked a sense of curiosity, just making me wonder, what were they going to do with the next trailer, and how was it going to push it then, and when was we going to get these games? I'll tell anyone with a straight face that Final Fantasy vs. 13 or Final Fantasy 15, depending upon how we're going to look at it, it definitely hit a peak for fans' interest back in 2013 with the last trailer for Versus and the unveiling for 15 at E3, and it was just at that point that we knew we was truly in for a beast of the game, without a doubt. But, hey. The thing that gets me with 13 and 15 is that they became very different games from their trailers down the line and they sort of aggressed into these games with head scratching mechanics and it just sort of sees the overall fun of the combat which is ultimately something that hampered the overall experience seeing how it's something that you spend most of your time doing in a JRPG anyways. Not to mention some clunky storytelling aspects that differ in degree but I will admit that does depend upon which of the two games we're talking about or multiple games if we're talking about the whole trilogy of 13 as well but hey that sounds like a video for another day and we're here to talk about 7 so let's stay on that. The point I'm clearly trying to make here is that Final Fantasy 7 Remake is a very different game and because say what you want about it its development reminds me a lot of Versus 13 in the sense that every time we saw the game it would look better and better without fail and in the end I could definitely say we were given a game that actually looks miles better on a visual and gameplay perspective when you compare it to the original trailer. Which, theoretically, isn't to say that this shouldn't be the end goal in general when making a game and posting up trailers, you know, to promote your game that you're working on, but it was just that there's a lot riding on this game, and I'm glad to see that in the end we really got to experience something that tries to go out of its way to find a satisfying middle ground that appeals to both new and old fans. In terms of the story presentation and the gameplay, of course, to be honest, whether I'm doing battles or just exploring around taking in the sights, this game just feels too damn good to be true. I mean, honestly, it's a little weird, but like, do any of you peeps feel that way when playing it? And as I'm writing this, I'm only about 20 or so hours in, and I'm only referring to the gameplay for the moment because it's still too early to say as far as the story goes, but I can definitely say that a lot of the times while playing it, I find myself wondering just, like, this is actually a game that I'm legit playing. Like, how is that possible? I, <laughs> I don't get it. Like at times I feel like I snuck into one of Square's like top secret labs or something and just stole a copy of the game and I'm just sitting at home playing it, having a blast. If I do have to be honest though, I think a lot of it is due with the fact that the game just couldn't have released at such a time when people needed it the most. And ironic to say considering how depressing that game can get, but it's just my guess is this is possibly what the Animal Crossing fans felt, you know, when that released last month, so it makes sense. But yeah, despite all the understandable texture and issues that can later be patched out to make the game look its very best that it... I mean, it looks good now, right? But just think about when it comes to PC and this game is pushed beyond its absolute potential. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's wishful thinking, and I'm a console gamer, but I just really want to see this game look the very best that it could. Without the limitations, right? Even though there's not like a lot of locations, of course, because it's pretty much just Midgar, it's just... It just feels really nice just going around and just taking a look at all the amounts of little intricate details that just spread throughout the levels. Like I really get a sense of the feeling that this was the direction that they wanted to go with for Final Fantasy XIII, but ended up falling flat somewhere along its linear level design choice. Especially when it came to towns. I know the excuse can be given that hey they was fugitives and all, but Cloud constantly walks around with a huge sword and has the eyes and outfit of a soldier, so I mean, I remember what happened to me the last time I walked out of a convention that night with a huge sword on my back. I tell you what, those were some pretty good cops that I ran into that night, I'll, I'll tell you that much if you catch my drift. All jokes aside, when it comes to Cloud though, people barely bat an eye of suspicion. He's just usually a friendly neighborhood mercenary here to save the day. Absolutely nothing strange about him, considering all the circumstances of everything else going on. Just nothing out of the ordinary about this guy 
walking around with a big old sword on his back. Oh, don't even get me started about his buddy with a gun on his arm. I mean, what are you even going to use that for? Really? Come on. Oh, wait, wait. Okay, I think I'm getting it. Like, maybe he could use it for, like, super spattering practice. I'm, I'm sure the kids will love that, right? Another thing about detail is just how diverse and expressive and natural the NPC feel right in the world. Like, there was so much care put into all the different animations that the way that they interact with the environments. Heck, even the banter you walk by and just happen to hear just seems so natural and real. So, yeah, as far as detail and scenery and the NPCs go, I think they did a fantastic job working with what they had. Also, to give a little bit of like context further into what I'm talking about with the NPCs, there's a part that's early in the game when you like do enough quests... Like, you go from being that oddball in town with a big sword to being like that town hero just for doing something small. And for some reason, that just gave me, like, this really feel-good feeling, and I, I appreciate it. I like it. Oh, man, and while we're on the topic of details, I just want to say I love being able to look up and see the plate and just seeing the light, how it just peeks through. It, it's just so cool to see something massive looming in the distance over you. And Oh, and there's this one part, I, I guess I won't say who you're with for spoiler reasons, it's nothing really major, but you're going from sector to sector, and just it, it's just the music that plays there in that part, along with being able just to look at all the sights and the sky, and just how everything just looks at night, like, it just felt like a really magical feeling, and a weird place to be at the same time, but trust me, you'll know when you get there. Alrighty, enough of that, awesome scenery. A super fun battle system that the demo only had a small taste to offer it of the multi-layered cake. That is, of all the strategic battles that you come face to face with as you progress through the story, of course. Speaking of story, that's something to talk about a little bit more in depth in another video. So that this one doesn't get too long, just because I think that it's something that I want to give a little bit more of a definite opinion on once I beat the game. Because right now, from where it stands, everything that I've already talked about has been pretty much universally praised, to be honest. But I think it does get a little bit more questionable in terms of story from what I hear as far as the late game goes, to be honest. Like, I, that was kind of expected. They took a 6 plus hour segment of the original game and made it 30 plus hours. So, it was bound to happen to be a little bit divisive in the end with how they was going to handle the story. But so far, I think that the story and even the side quests of all things have been doing a good job and giving me a sense of enjoyment that's really causing me to take my time with the game to get the most out of it. So, I mean, fast enough so when it's not like eating up my life so I can still get back to doing videos, of course, but enough of pace to really enjoy what the game has to offer all around. So, I doubt I'd platinum it my first go, but I'm sure I'd get pretty damn close to doing so. Maybe I'll go back to do it later. I don't know. We'll see. I'm usually not the type to go and complete games like that, in a completionist sense that is, but we'll see. Why don't I give like a small take on this story real quick. There's been moments throughout what I've experienced so far that have legit made me so emotionally happy just to see how well handled these characters are with how they interact and, and it just makes you want to like do what you can and make sure these characters stay around forever because they're just, they're just really good. One thing I especially love is just how meaningful and relevant Biggs, Jesse, and Wedge are in this game. Like, they have more of a reason for you to care for them than they ever had before. And, and if you had to ask me if there's one thing that I can say that this remake definitely gets right in terms of bringing something new to the table, it has to be that. Also, it's a legitimate fact that Wedge is easily best bro. And don't forget that. I mean, okay, I may be a bit biased there, but hey, when have I ever given you a reason to doubt me before? <laughs> hmm, careful how you reply to that one. I'm taking notes of the comments and I'd hate for you to end up on there. I'm just kidding around. All in all, so far so good. I'm loving everything I'm seeing and I just can't wait to get to the end of the game so I can start feeling safe again when being on YouTube in this constant barrage of spoiler thumbnails trying to rain on my good mood. I, I feel like a deer in headlights when those things pop up and God forbid you just start searching for something like music from the game and which, may I take a moment and just say it's absolutely godly how good the music sounds in this game. Like, oh my god, the amount of bangers that I heard from the soundtrack is just wild. Just getting back to that point that I was trying to make before though, before I forget my train of thought. You know, just trying to look up anything that's like related to music maybe, without a spoiler possibly trying to creep up on you. Just, it's just crazy some of the stuff that I've seen out of the corner of my eye and I just have to go, oh, can't, can't look over there. Oh, look at that. I tell you, at the end of the day, these people just want the clicks and they can give a damn about their fellow fan. I mean, come on, let people enjoy the game without having the biggest surprises ruined for them. Like when Sephiroth just straight up comes in and stabs. 